think you should. My daughter and I might go on Saturday. Yeah. Fun big man matchup in the first one. Both are both gonna be good games. Sorry. Yeah, nice to meet you. Grayson, this is this is Steph. Uh, feeling better. Uh, well, this is probable uh, for tomorrow. So yeah. Uh, I'm curious when you look at Anthony Edwards and the growth uh, that he, he is a problem. So what it makes him a problem? You said it. He's a problem. <laughs> he can do it all. I mean, he's arguably the most athletic guy in the NBA. Um, can shoot it, can put it on the floor. It's really improved his passing, playing pick and roll, playing the post, playoff pin downs, playing the open court. Uh, there's not a whole lot that he can't do. And, uh, and he defends his, his butt off too and makes superhero type plays like you saw in Indiana a few weeks back. What is the key or keys when you're defending? Like, team you effort. Okay. It'll be a team effort. Not one guy going to try to slow him down, you know. Um, Bigs will be involved, or gap helps will be a, a big deal. I mean, he's got to see five bodies every time he touches the basketball, you know, and just try to make everything as difficult as we can. Coach, when you look at the group that Book's been over the last two games, and a lot of that is just Book being Book, but is there anything you can point to in terms of people trying this differently or using him in this way that's been effective? I'd love to take credit for it, <laughs> uh, but it's Book being Book. You know, he, he's he's got a unique ability. Uh, to just raise his level above everyone around him and uh, do what he did the last couple games. And you know, he knows what, uh, what is at stake right now with these, these games that we view as the playoffs before the playoffs. And uh, you know, we want to do everything we can to get in the, in the top six while remaining confident that if we are in the playing game, you know, that we'll, we'll win those games as well. But you know, it's just that time of year for him and he's want to make sure he does whatever the team needs for us to win. You mentioned Brad and Kevin both initiating more recently. How do you like that balance in terms of having that multiple ball handler attack like you've been talking about since I did the summer? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's coming together. You know, it's coming together. It's still imperfect. You know, I think, uh, I think Brad is maybe over-rotating a little bit in terms of how much I'm asking him to play point guard and, and to really touch the paint and facilitate for others. He's generating a lot of offense uh, for us. Um, you know, but we want him to score the ball too. You know, and uh, but he's that's just a you know a, a great player being unselfish. When you got you know, KD and, and Book scoring the way they, they did last night and the way they have been, how much does that open up for the rest of the guys? Uh, it's everything. You know, I mean, you, you have to you have to have guys that can uh, beat single coverage, okay, and become a problem with just their their aggressiveness to score the ball, and you know force the the opponent into double teams. Early helps. Uh, all those things are what generate great ball movement. Without guys like that, it's it's difficult to generate great ball movement and create advantages. Uh, but those guys scoring the ball at the, the clip that they are, you know, they do all those things. How much do you think this, this team has grown over the last 70 games? You know, as you get ready for this. Last game? how many games? 70 games. You know, That's for the full season, night and day. And we're night and day today than than who we were to start the season, in in every way, um, health, uh, role players. Um, you know, playing with one of those guys out of the lineup because of the injuries we saw a lot early in the season, finding the balance when all three are in the game together. Um, you know, our centers knowing their roles. You know, everything has uh, steadily gotten better uh, each month as the season has has gone along. And you know, I feel like we're uh, while we still have areas we need to improve. You know, we're in position to potentially play our best basketball of the year come playoff time. With Derek, whether it's the threes or his shot attempts sort of going down in the last six weeks, how have you seen him still impact the game offensively in the ways we've seen all season uh, despite Who the shots? Nurk. Oh, yeah. No, well, Nurk played, uh, what, he had uh, two points last game and yeah. was one of our best players. I mean, what the dirty work that he does uh, for our team, it cannot be stated loudly enough uh, how important that is and the value that he's bringing to our team. Um, you know, we have a, a super skilled team, but we have a thin team, you know what I mean? And, you know, he's the rugged guy, you know, the anchor of our defense. The guy is dominating the boards for us. The guy is setting all the physical screens. And, um, you know, sometimes he has a, a high scoring total and a high shot total, and sometimes he doesn't based on the way the defenses are playing us. Um, but he's also playing, you know, extra pass basketball as well. So, you know, his, his pass outs from the paint, uh, being able to throw the ball to him and, and play the pass and cut game, uh, you know, you, I honestly can't can't state loudly enough uh, his importance to our team. He's spoken with us throughout the season about 
um, not so much accepting his role, but just doing whatever he can to help the team in the ways that you guys are asking. How were your initial conversations with him when you started to realize how unselfish he is along with um, some of the stars of your team as well? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, pretty pretty well in line with uh, the role that we had envisioned for him. You know, like sometimes he's going to score the ball. We're not going to throw the ball into the post, you know, and ask him to, you know, get, get 15 shots out of the post each game. You know, he's going to be a finisher, a receiver, and somebody that we can uh, play through at the top of the top of the key, you know, with uh, utilizing his passing ability and then anchor our defense. Coach, just to follow up with that, there were stretches early against New Orleans where he was in perfect position on Zion time, trying to make the drive. You met him up high, then you met him on the side. How many of those more, more moments have you seen from him in the last month or so as opposed to the first month of the season? A ton. You know, I, he would fall in the same bucket as our group. He's steadily gotten better each month throughout the course of the season, you know, in terms of what we're asking him to do. Um, you know, whether it's on a guy like Zion or just playing uh, Garland and Mitchell in the pick and roll game. You know, I mean, each game is different with, with what responsibilities he has, and, um, you know, he's gotten better each month. Coach, coming off two big wins, what were some of the focuses in practice today? Don't settle. You know, we played a good basketball game, not a great basketball game last night, and good is the enemy of great. And we've got a, a stronger opponent coming in tomorrow night. Um, but to get a 20-point win against the third-ranked team uh, in the Eastern Conference is a big-time uh, win for us. So we're happy with it. We watched film on many ways that we could have been even better. And you know, we have to continue to push the envelope to, to rise our level uh, because of the, the games we have coming up. Yesterday, Chauncey Phillips and Vince Carter were inducted in the Hall of Fame. That was announced. And, uh, Great. I didn't know that. Yeah, you actually, uh, at one point, you said you had uh, history with the Celtics, and Chauncey was a rookie there at 97, only just short of 60 games. Were you there at that time, by chance? Or? I contributed to us drafting Chauncey Phillips <laughs> in Boston. Yeah, it was, uh, it was my first year in the NBA. Uh, you know, obviously, the year before, Coach Patino took the job with the Celtics. You know, they lost a lot of games. You know, I don't know if it was to try to get Tim Duncan. <laughs> wink, wink. Uh, they didn't get the, the, you know, the top pick. And, you know, they were able to, uh, you know, look at the, the other guys out there. Keith Van Horn ended up going number two. And, uh, and we got Chauncey Billups, who became a Hall of Famer. So, you know, I think we nailed it. Uh, obviously, they made a, a knee-jerk reaction and traded him early in his instant in Boston. But, uh, you know, I, I fondly remember you know, my time early on when he was drafted and uh, came in as a rookie and uh, got his first taste of the NBA the same year I did. Yeah, so what was actually any memories that you had, interactions with him when you guys, uh, when the Celtics had him during your time there? Yeah, just, uh, you know, just going through it together, you know, learning the ropes, uh, teaching him what uh, Coach Patino expected, uh, the, the work ethic that goes into it, using his, his skill set that he used at Colorado to uh, to translate into the NBA and um, you know just helping a young player grow. You know those are uh, those are relationships. The fact that you and I are still friends after all this time, you know. And uh, I tried to hire him in Orlando. I don't know if everybody knows that. When I got the job in uh, in Orlando, I tried to hire him as my lead assistant. He was wasn't quite ready to get into coaching, um, you know. But the relationship, you know, stayed and persisted uh, all this time. So uh, super happy for him and obviously super happy for Vince as well. Joe Johnson's a beloved guy here. He was another one, right, where you guys had him for that one year and then you on Joe Johnson in, in oh, Boston. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had Joe Johnson as well. I think yeah. that was the second year I was there. I, I believe it was, yeah, it was yeah. Well, 01, 02 was when he was drafted, and I think Phoenix got him that a year. Actually. Joe Johnson, Kedrick Brown, and Joseph Forte we drafted. Didn't draft Tony Parker. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of teams staring at the, at the spot, not just, not just the Celtics. Right. Frank, you talked about at the beginning of the season just how smoothly things were going with Kevin Young. How's that relationship evolved throughout this year and putting wonderful. the offense together? Yeah, it's been wonderful. And, you know, Kev, Kev's a lead assistant, so he doesn't just do the offense. You know, he helps manage the, the, whole, the whole group and the whole operation. You know, all the game plans we're putting together. Um, you know, he does have more of a, an eye on the offensive side of the ball, but, you know, he's helping with everything, and he's one of the brightest young coaches in the league. Has the offense met your expectations with what? You guys are putting together Continuing to, to, to grow. Good, not great. Um, you know, we still have a, another layer that I think we can reach that, um, that I think we will reach, you know. But uh, what he's done uh, in terms of his role, you know, uh, 10 out of 10. He's done a great job.
Yeah, I think just, you know, guys having the right spacing on the court, uh, you know, creating advantage for whoever has the ball, give them open lanes. And I think, you know, whether we're driving and kicking out for open threes or dumb downs for the bigs, uh, just creating advantage on the offensive side. Uh, yeah, make things tough for him. Uh, you know, try to beat him to a spot. You know, um, contest every shot. And, you know, uh, you know, have multiple defenders guarding him. Different, different coverages. You know, so. Last night was actually the first time you were kind of with those other four starters. I know you pride yourself on being able to slot in a lot of different guys. How did you like that look and how seamlessly you were able to kind of deal with it? Uh, I mean, like you say, I try to fit in. You know, with any group I'm in. Uh, I mean, it was great, you know, getting to start, you know, for Grayson being out, you know, get him right. Uh, I mean, like I said, whether I'm starting, you know, coming off the bench, I'm still going to play the same way, you know, try to fit in whatever group I'm in. Look at the last couple of weeks, there's been some up and down games, but you guys have been able to sustain it over the last two. What do you take from those two games as areas where you continue to build on that consistency? Uh, especially on the defensive end, uh, communicate more. I mean, uh, you know, limited transition baskets, turnovers as well. I mean, I think that's been a big key for us, you know, um, getting them more shots. And uh, I think it's, you know, locking in on both ends of the court, doing what we got to do to win these games. How much more comfortable are you with, with the team and with the guys, you know, since you've gotten uh, I mean, really comfortable. Since day one, they welcome me, uh, you know, each day getting better, learning, you know, where I can fit in, you know, make things happen, and just being myself. What does that say about the culture of the Cheetos already kind of established before you got here? Hi, Ish. You making shots over there? <laughs> See, guys like that. But, uh, I mean, just having a fun environment. I mean, everybody, you know, being great guys, getting along well. I mean, I think we all here for one purpose. So, uh, I mean, just building that connectivity on the court and off the court. With, with KD and, and Booker shooting and scoring the way they have been, how much easier does it get for you? How much does the teams open up for the rest of you guys? I mean, it opens up a lot. I mean, uh, you know, they start getting double teamed. You know, we getting open looks, wide open threes. Uh, you know, knocking them down. And the guys, you know, being playmakers and scorers. You played Rudy and uh, facing him tomorrow night. Obviously, there's the chemistry you guys had in Utah. But what is it like to try to go at him in practice and try to get shots over him, being that they're an elite rim protection team? Uh, practice and stuff. I used to cook Rudy. No, I'm playing. But, uh, <laughs> No, I mean, you know, throughout the years he's gotten better. Uh, I mean, just you know, you know, growing with him, uh, just being, seeing how far he came, and you know, proud of him. But uh, you know, just playing basketball, reading open looks, you know, attacking him, or you know, kicking it out, knocking out open shots, spacing. So just finding ways to score. Well, there's been a lot of talk about Brad really sacrificing to be a part of this team. Where do you see him? Uh, I mean, Brad does everything. I mean, uh, you know, defensively, setting the tone, being a point guard, you know, getting guys open looks. And then whether he has to score or not himself, I mean, that's what he's doing. I mean, I mean, Brad is, you know, one of the key guys on this team. I mean, I think his leadership and everything sets the tone for everybody else. You played with Donovan for a couple of years. Were you surprised you were able to get him with the bunk bank a couple of times? Yeah, I told him I was going to get him. Uh, he said he was running me off the line, so I didn't take any more threes. But... <laughs> But no, nah, I mean, uh, you know, me and Don, you know, uh, since we came in together, just seeing how far he's came and, you know, things he's accomplished in this league, he's only going to keep getting better. So, I mean, happy for him. Still talk to him every day. So.